Yo, this is Elliot Hulse. You're listening to Revolution Hive. I am a fitness expert. I love fitness. I love strength training. I love bodybuilding. I love weightlifting. I've been doing this since the time I was 13 years old. I can't find anything else that would be worth my time to do. That's all this is. is Elliot's ideas. Take it or leave it. If it's interesting and resourceful to you, use it. If it makes you uncomfortable, then just turn it off. Yo, Elliot! Who is Elliot Hulse? I, I literally ask myself that question all the time because it's a question that I grew up being asked all the time. Coming from a home where my parents, a first generation American, both my parents are from Belize. Belize is one of those colon, you know, European colonies where they brought their African slaves and everybody had sex with the natives. So there's a bit of racial ambiguity with a lot of the people that come out of Belize and some of the Central American countries. So coming to the United States and living in a suburb of New York City where everyone kind of is segregated to a degree socioeconomically but also racially, everyone knows their place. You know, you've got, you know, the Italians and the Irish and the Asians and the Jamaicans and the Jews, so on and so forth, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, everybody knows where they belong. And here I am from a country that no one's ever heard of, not looking like anybody else. I could kind of fit in one place but not in another. Um, depending on whether or not people wanted to accept me. And it was always a question of, well, what are you? So that being a question that bounced around in my head, I've, I've almost essentially, you could say, developed my life, my philosophies, my ways of thinking and being around this question of, well, who am I? And I've stumbled across a lot of different ideas that shatter the lie that we've been told about who we are as individuals and even that concept is a lie that we're individuals we're really why do you say that well if you can if you consider that a tree apples or a tree leaves it creates leaves and that each leaf is a outgrowth of this this one entity if you had a, if you had a situation where each tree each leaf were to say that I am one and only, I am separate and above all the other leaves of this tree, it would be completely retarded. In fact, it would create some sort of a cancer within the organism because for one leaf to behave because it thinks that it's somehow different than all the others means that it has to, it has to somehow either be better than the rest to some degree, do you see? Yeah, yeah. And they all come so that's that a thing. metaphor for the fact that I, it's my conviction that the physical manifestation of every human being is a reduced form of a spiritual reality. There's actually a story in um, the Vedic Indian culture of um, the god Krishna and he eats a piece of dirt from the ground when he's a little boy. And his mother, she finds out and she obviously, you know, scolds him. And um, when she looks inside his mouth, she sees the entire universe. And that the analogy that's being expressed there is, of course, that same thing that, that you're talking about, that there's this ice that is Elliot Hulse or Keshav Bat, but it's part, right. it's water and this cloud and it's everywhere. Um, right. I, I kind of want to come back to your journey on, on YouTube, um, especially because I think I'm very much at the beginning of it. Um, and, and you probably have a lot of insight that I think other non-jobbers will, will benefit from and also myself. Um, so do you ever have moments where you kind of look back at where you've reached at the moment and, and just think, wow, like 200,000 subscribers, people are posting on my wall every day. Like, how do you look back at that? And is it kind of surreal for you? Yeah, it is surreal. But the real weird thing is when I go, like I walk around in my own city or I go to the supermarket, or I travel a little bit, and and it's strange because everywhere I go, people know me. I never intended for that to happen. I just made videos because I wanted to teach people about fitness and strength, and uh, and earn a living doing so. And I guess this is just the way it ends up looking. What are your What are your bits of advice and tips to kind of take it to that next level? And and um, I guess I, I feel that myself personally, I'm in a position where I'm doing all the right things, but 
it's just a case of exposure and getting out there to more people. Well, there are two things that you got to consider. And before I, I tell you that, I just want to uh, share the fact that I started making YouTube videos in 2007 with zero intention at all. I'm, the only reason why I made videos is because I needed to talk to people on my email list. I'm building an email list because I was selling football workouts. Yeah. You know, email. And I was like, well, how can I talk to these people? And it was like, this brand new thing, YouTube came out. And I was like, oh, I can put myself on video. And then I would I'd make a video and then I just send it in an email and say, hey guys, I made a video. I wanted to tell you something. Or, or I wanted to show you a workout or something. And um, I had no clue that like it, it could actually become a business. See, you're asking me how to turn it into a business. I didn't realize it. Like, yeah, really? I could yeah, earn a living yeah. doing this. That's you know who the Hodge twins are. I didn't like. I didn't know that it was a business. I, and I spoke to the guy one time, and, and he was like, "Yeah, this is our full time. We just make videos. This is our full time thing." And I was like, "Earn a living from those stupid commercials that run in front of your videos?" Yeah, but I put it or, like ten bucks a day. He's like, "No." <laughs> a lot more than that. So I turned it on and I was like, oh shit, I've been throwing away tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> and I'm turning it on my ass. So what you got to understand is that there's there's reaching people broad, reaching a lot of people, right? So right now, you know, I'm reaching a lot of people, but I also built a construct so that I can reach people deeply. If you only focus on reaching people broadly, you're gonna have a, you're gonna you're gonna suffer in the beginning because you have you're gonna be hungry because you have no construct to serve people deeply. So while you're you know you say you have you know less than a hundred subscribers, well guess what? Imagine a hundred people were buy, bought your book right now. Imagine a hundred people uh, subscribe to your thirty dollar a month website. I'm going to my barber shop later on today, and he probably has about a hundred clients. It's just a hundred people. Yeah. Those hundred people put food on his table, send his kids to school, put gas in his car. You said recently, I think your words were, this is a system that is designed to tell you to shut up and stay in line. And then you get a meager earning, even though you've worked your ass off. Um, so I'm, I was interested particularly in that idea of the system and, and conforming and being placed into a box. Um, what was your reasoning behind that? And wh why do you feel that way? You know. The best way for me to approach, to approach most of these questions is through my own experience. And and growing up and definitely not fitting in, and not only did I not physically fit in the way I look, but also I have, a, I have a lot of energy. I have a lot of scattered energy too. They might say I have ADD. Well, when you're a lot stronger, you look different, and you've got this freaking crazy ass energy about you where you just, you, you don't sit down, you don't shut up. They, in, in our society, they give you medication. Hmm. You know, you, this kid is he's a loose cannon. Talks too much, he, he's thinking way outside the box. It's like, no, Elliot, we want you to color within these lines. And I was always like, I want to color over here. Yeah. Elliot, you need to sit down. And, it, and I was always like, no, I want to stand up. So I'd get up and I'd, like, I'd have to walk. And i just walk and I'd look. And eventually it was just too much. It was like, this kid, we can't teach with him. Give him rhythm. So they gave him, you know, they, sent me to special doctors and shit because clearly there must have been something wrong with him and they gave me medication that just kind of shut me up shrunk me down sat me down and I was able to do what they wanted me to do because essentially my soul was stripped from me and that's what these drugs do to children and guess what I started fitting in I started doing well I got good grades a part of me is still that 10 year old kid that's like that looks back with you know adult eyes and sees all the other children sitting in rows and doing what they're told and earning good grades and getting stickers next to their names, right? And uh, and I and, and I'm a bit resentful of them because I'm like you little son of bitches, slaves, you're so weak and meager. Look at you just following directions. These guys that they're not any smarter than you are, and and I had to be squashed in order to fit in with the rest of you. They gave me medication so that I could be like this? You think you're, you're so special because you can sit down, listen, and follow directions. Well, that's exactly why you're not interesting. And that's exactly why your life sucks. And that's exactly why you resent every single waking moment that you have to serve others in a way that you despise so that you can earn that paycheck, which all that paycheck is now is that little sticker that they used to put next to your name when you were in fifth grade. I don't know if you've seen uh, the TED talk by Ken Robinson, 
at the very beginning of, of education, um, they did a, a longitudinal study where they tested children over a period of years. And they gave them a, a genius test where they gave them a paperclip and said, hey, here's a paperclip. See how many uses you can come up with, with for this one paperclip. And what you find is that a genius level, average people will get about 28 to 30. Genius people will get like 100 and above because they'll think of ideas like, what if the paperclip was 100 feet high and made of foam rubber? So they tested these yeah. kids and they found, um, I think it was uh, kindergarten or, or the year above that kind of age. And 98% um, were at genius level. And then they tested them again at around um, kind of seven, eight years old and it had dropped to 75. And then by the time they got to 12, 13, um, yeah. And um, <laughs> he, 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 one of the points he makes is that we, uh, as we kind of grow older, our education moves from the whole body where we get to run around and play to up and up and up. And then it's just our head and our brain. And then it's to one side of our brain because maths and sciences are seen as more important than yeah. the others. It's more, it is more important because the so we live in a machine that's an economic machine. In order for you to pay taxes, you had better know how to calculate these fucking numbers. You see? So it is, it, it's what we decide is important as a culture. And that's what we've decided is important. Taxpayer. Yeah. I mean, who, who, who are the, least, the most abject members of society? Those who can't pay taxes, right? people then you also have corporations like um starbucks over here they mm -hmm. owe like 30 million in in tax corporation tax they haven't paid they don't care they don't care and, and these are the same guys who are going to be sponsoring you know political parties and things like that yeah um the government here in fact when they created the coalition in uh, 2010 the uk's health policy they invited pepsico diageo subway mcdonald's to decide what the health policy was, as opposed to it the all people has to who, do with this machine. I'm particularly interested, obviously, as I said earlier, with working with young people. So, what what do you think with this um, duality between organic and mechanical? What do you think the main challenges are for young people today? Especially, I know you've got young children um, as well. I mean, how how, how do you really see that? Cool saying. Have you read Mastery? He he quotes Miles Davis, I believe, or Charlie Parker, who's a great jazz musician. And it, 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 it wraps it all up in this one saying. Uh, he says, to become a great musician, first you must learn the notes and play the music as it's written. Then you just, then after you've learned the music, then you forget all that shit and just play. Yeah. The idea that you, you first, you've got to figure out how this thing goes so you go to school you learn to read you gotta learn how to read you have to learn mathematics you gotta learn the mechanics of this thing you have to because otherwise then you're just you're, you're useless to anyone else you're useless to yourself you want to have some fun right you want to be able to play if you never learn how to do the notes then you never get to play like charlie parker so you, you do that but then there comes a point a time where you say boom that's done i'm out of here and then you go play and that's about the time of 23, 24 years old, when you just get out of college. Now, you gotta remember, okay, you're free. No more school, you're not forced to go, your parents have let you out. Yeah. Guess what you can go do now? Play. But what happens is, we start looking for a job, a career, a corporation to go work for. So we, we don't give up that, that that stage of what would be apprenticeship, where you're just learning, go and play. And I guarantee you, in that playing, because you already know how to read and write, in that playing, your creativity will now be infused with the structure of education. You're gonna create something beautiful, something that's never been created before. Stop looking at what everybody else is doing and create something new. You are the sum of your thoughts. And so what you repeatedly tell yourself, you repeatedly believe. There's more to life than increasing its speed or quantity. If you're willing to slow down and be open to it, there's a great deal that you can really learn from nature.